Mrs. Z is a 75-year-old obese woman that has been suffering from confusion and nausea for the past two weeks. She has been vomiting and has not been eating or drinking properly. She has intermittent chest pain with shortness of breath and feels dizzy and sleepy. Her heart rate has been variable in the past and the ambulatory EKG shows rates varying from an average of 55 to 125 beats per minute. What brings you in, Mrs. Z? Well, I've been vomiting and um, I've been vomiting and I'm confused and I haven't been eating or drinking very much. On Nurse Leslie's examination, she found Mrs. Z having a pulse rate of 35 to 50 beats per minute. Mrs. Z's other results were blood pressure 175 over 100, respiratory rate 14 breaths per minute, no fever, and normal arterial blood gases. So do we need to admit Mrs. Z in the hospital? Yes. The physician diagnosed that Mrs. Z is experiencing heart failure and the physician orders that the patient be put on an IV drip of digoxin, STAT. Digoxin is a generic name. Just a quick background history check for digoxin. The trade names are Lenoxin, Lenoxicaps, Cardoxin, and Digitec. The therapeutic class for digoxin is antiarrhythmics. The pharmacologic class is cardiac glycoside, and the subclass is inotropes and pressors. Why administer digoxin to Mrs. Z? Digoxin is used to treat heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and it helps the heart to beat stronger and with a more regular rhythm. How does digoxin work in the body? Before we start with the mechanism, we need to start with the normal cellular physiology at rest. We know that potassium at rest is high inside the cell and sodium is high outside the cell. Because of this, there is a natural driving force for sodium to come into the cell and potassium to move out. Because of this, we have an ATP driven sodium potassium pump. What this pump does is it pumps sodium out of the cell against its gradient and pumps potassium back in, allowing us to maintain our resting potential. We also have a pump known as a sodium calcium exchanger. And what this is gonna do is use the driving force of sodium inside the cell down its gradient in order to exchange for a calcium ion. This is gonna happen at the rate of three sodiums in and one calcium out. The cell is trying to keep potassium high inside and sodium high outside and make sure not too much calcium is inside the cell. The way digoxin works is to increase the contractile force of the heart. It's going to work by inhibiting the sodium potassium ATPase. Now what happens when we do all that is sodium naturally moves down its gradient and its levels within the cell increase significantly. The reason this is so important is because it has a negative effect on the sodium calcium exchanger. What happens now, because sodium is so high inside the cell, this natural driving force no longer occurs. And as a result, this ability to drive calcium outside the cell is stopped. What happens is now calcium starts to accumulate within the cell. This is important because calcium has a positive effect on contractility. So as calcium increases, we get an increased amount in force of cardiac tissue contractility, and we call this positive entropy. Before administering digoxin, I need to identify Mrs. Z's drug history to identify any contraindications or drug interactions that may affect Mrs. Z negatively. Nurse Leslie's nursing considerations include the following. Taking a complete history of Mrs. Z's current medications to see if there are any drug interactions, which would include the following. Diuretics. Diuretics will increase the risk of dysrhythmias due to hypokalemia. 
ACE inhibitors, potassium sparing diuretics, potassium supplements, all decrease therapeutic effect of digoxin due to hyperkalemia. Other positive inotropic agents have additive effects on myocardial contractility. Beta blockers have additive effects such as bradycardia and bronchospasms. Antacids and cholesterol lowering drugs will decrease absorption of digoxin. Intravenous calcium will increase the risk of dysrhythmias. The list of contraindications for digoxin are ventricular fibrillation, sick sinus syndrome, AV block, history of MI, kidney disease, thyroid disorder, electrolyte imbalance, which includes low levels of calcium, magnesium, and potassium in the blood, and being older than 65 years old. Since Mrs. Z is 75 years old, Nurse Leslie will need to carefully monitor for digoxin toxicity, signs and symptoms that Mrs. Z may possibly already exhibit. So, Nurse Leslie, how should I be taking digoxin? Well, Mrs. Z, since you have been admitted to my floor in heart failure, I will be administering digoxin to you through IV drip. But when you go home, I am sure the physician will write you a prescription for the oral form, and it will come in either a tablet or a capsule. At what time should I be taking digoxin? It is very important that you take digoxin at the same time every day. What should I do if I miss a dose? Take your missed dose as soon as you remember, but be sure to skip a missed dose if your next dose is less than 12 hours away. Now, Mrs. Z, in taking digoxin, you will experience some expected side effects such as dizziness, fainting, irregular heartbeat or pulse, bleeding gums, blood in your urine, stool, or vomit, skin rash, stomach pain, chest pain or discomfort, nausea, shortness of breath, sweating, swelling in the lower extremities, diarrhea, blurred or double vision, halos around lights, tunnel vision, headache, loss of appetite, swelling of your breasts and breast soreness, weakness, and weight loss. However, if you are experiencing any adverse side effects, you'll need immediate medical attention. Some severe adverse side effects include severe shallow breathing, irregular heartbeat, taking a long time to scab if you get a cut, hallucinations, bleeding in the intestines by seeing black colored stools. Are there any foods or drinks I can't consume? The drug should be used with caution with ginseng, which may increase the risk of digoxin toxicity. You also need to follow a low sodium diet, take potassium supplements, or include high potassium foods such as bananas and orange juice in your diet. Do not take St. John's wort. Do not eat licorice. You need to be cautious when using Metamucil as well. What happens if I take too much digoxin? What should I do? Mrs. Z, you need to contact Poison Helpline or call 911 immediately because an overdose of digoxin can be fatal. Once you get to the emergency department, they will administer digoxin immune fab, also called Digiband, and you will be monitored continuously during the infusion. 36 hours later, Nurse Leslie has a few reminders for Mrs. Z before she will be discharged home. Okay, Mrs. Z, you need to take digoxin exactly as prescribed. Do not skip or double a dose or change dose intervals and take it at the same time each day. Do not switch brands of digoxin unless directed by the physician. You must weigh yourself daily and report a weight gain or loss of two or more pounds in a 24-hour period. Be sure to keep all doctor and lab appointments so we can monitor your electrolyte levels periodically, especially potassium, renal function laboratory levels, digoxin drug levels, and your EKG. Please monitor your vital signs, and here is a diary for you to record your numbers. Please bring it with you to all your appointments. Mrs. C, read over this brochure for any other additional information. And remember, we are always here for you, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Well, thank you, Nurse Leslie. I have all the information I need. I will contact my physician if I experience any unusual effects because of my medication.